All right, so today we're continuing our four-part series on the electrical system, the major components, and today we'll be covering the inverter. So the inverter that we chose was the Victron 5000 watt, 48 volt, 120 volt AC side with a 70 amp charger. So um, some of the reasons we went with this Victron inverter um, are it's just its reputation. It's got an extremely good reputation as far as reliability and durability. Um, they've been using them in marine settings for years and years and years. They kind of came out of the marine setting. Um, 5,000 watts we thought would be plenty for when we are off, you know, often powering everything from the batteries. Um, it kind of matches our relatively large battery uh, fairly well. So it says 48 volts, but it's configurable because even though we are configured in a 48 volt setup, our battery actually comes in at much higher than 48 volt, which is the reason we had to change some of these uh, breakers and stuff. So our battery actually sits at somewhere around 57-ish volts, 55-ish volts. So it'll sit in there, um, and this particular um, inverter is configurable to handle that so it does that just fine it goes I think it'll go all the way up to 60 so um, it is also a power boosting or hybrid or power assist there's a bunch of different names um, but what it basically means is if the draw let's say you're plugged into shore power and you've got your AC on and you're running your microwave and you've got blowing dry in your hair so you've got a bunch of high amp draw um, devices on what will happen is that can overload like even if you're plugged into 50 amp you can overload that 50 amps we're only on one leg of 50 amp 50 amp technically has two legs but since our inverter is only 120 we could only use one so we can only use 50 amps but if the inverter senses that we're going over our limit it will use it will pull juice out of the batteries to try to fill that gap so rather than pop the breaker it'll pull juice out of our batteries and then until that load dies down then it'll go back to charging the batteries so if it's pulling 50 amps from the wall or from the from the um, RV park it will try to use the whole 50 amps that is it will use whatever your load is in the bus whatever you're running acs and and uh, cooktops or whatever and then what's left over it will then start pumping into the batteries so um the battery charger that is in this system is also fully configurable so um you can have it go all the way up to 70 amps so and that's at 48 volts so 70 amp doesn't sound like a lot but at 48 volts that's quite a bit so it, it is configurable um, to you can set it up however you'd like and you can also set up um, what the different voltages are how high it should go and when it should go into float mode and absorption mode now we're running lithium so those things aren't as important those float and absorption and all that lead acid batteries um, are what drove the complications in those chargers um, and that's because in a lead acid battery the last 10 percent can take up to a hundred percent more time um, and that's why they have this absorption phase and and float phase and all that stuff um, for lithiums it's much you can pound them you can basically go full power all the way up um, we've chosen to not use our batteries to full capacity um, we've chosen to go between 20 and 80 percent because we've read a bunch of papers that said if you stay within that range if you can if you can manage to stay within that range you'll get much much higher life out of your batteries and so the numbers that we saw were um, these batteries um, uh, there was people that did tests on this exact on these Nissan Leaf modules and they said if you run them from basically from almost zero to a hundred percent you can only get about 1200 uh, charges out of them uh, charge cycles out of them but if you keep between 20 and 80 percent that number looks more like 5000 so that's quite a bit more for not you know not that much of a compromise so anyway like typically in lead acid batteries you can only use 50 50 percent of the capacity uh, anyway before you start damaging those cells so um, 
Some of the other reasons we chose this battery are because of its compatibility with the Color Control GX, which is this really nice interface, and we'll be doing an entire video just on that. But it shows you where power is coming in, and if the charger's on, and if your solar's working, how much you're getting from your solar, what kind of battery life you have left in your battery, um, all kinds of stuff. So that compatibility not only that but it will also upload it and so you can see it from anywhere in the world uh, in real time so that was also one of the other benefits so another benefit is that it works with the charge controller we've chosen uh, we chose a Victron charge controller as well uh, for the solar and it works nicely to keep the batteries within a specified range um, the Quattro itself is kind of neat it has four uh, AC inputs and outputs and so it has two AC inputs coming in so one can be shore power and one can be uh, like a generator or you can have two generators so those are configurable and there's a bunch of different ways you can configure them um, it will also prioritize one over the other so if you plug in shore power it'll turn off your generator or vice versa um, so that's kind of neat the other thing is on the AC outs it's got two AC outs which is kind of neat one AC out will allow you to be sort of like your main AC out which will use the hybrid and it'll boost the output of that one the other one it will only power when it's on shore power or on there's like when there's another AC source coming in, that will get powered. So where that comes into play is um, if you only want to run your electric hot water heater when you're plugged in, say at an RV park, then you would plug it into that other AC out. Or if you only want to run, say, your, your second and third uh, ACs only when you're plugged in, um, you don't have to do anything to throw switches or anything. You would just plug it into that other AC out and it would start doing it then. So another reason we chose this um, this particular inverter is um, you can parallel configure them. In other words, if 5,000 watts wasn't enough and say we needed 10,000 watts, we could run two of them and they would talk nicely together and produce 10,000 watts of output all the way up to six. So another way we could do it is if we decided we needed 240, we could buy another one of these inverters and then there's a way to hook them up so that they will provide 240. So now instead of getting uh, 5,000 watts at 120 watts, we'd get 5,000 watts at 240, uh, 240 volts. So essentially doubling the, uh, the wattage. So anyway, the last reason is the charger. As I discussed before, it's a fully configurable charger. Um, you can set the parameters. It will look at the power you're using and, you, and any excess from the shore power, it will then push back into the battery. All right, so that's an overview of why we chose the Victron Quattro. We spent quite a, time, a bit of time researching all the different offerings and um, looking at a bunch of different inverters from you know the the cheaper ones all the way up um, and we just kept landing back on this one um, so that's some of the top reasons um, I'm sure I missed a few but that's some of the top reasons that we chose this particular inverter okay so next we'll talk real briefly about how we wired our uh, inverter so our inverter takes two AC uh, inputs and AC2 is the shore power one. So we wired that one in uh, with, a 50, with a 50 amp cable. So we have a 50 amp cable that goes around on the uh, driver's side of the bus and hooks in to a power out inlet. So um, we have a video on that if, uh, if you want to check that out. Um, but from that power inlet, it goes through an EMS um, surge protector first, and then it goes through another 50 amp breaker, and then it comes into here. So um, we have to make sure we check that before we power anything up. Um, the AC1 uh, will be hooked to our generator. So um, our plans are to run a relatively small generator, so we'll probably keep that wiring down to 30 amps. We're hoping that um, we can get by using a little bit less of that. 
And so um, then we have AC outs. So for AC outs, um, as I stated before, uh, AC1 is the main AC out that gets hybrid inverted and everything. And then AC2 is actually only live when you have uh, AC1 or AC2 plugged in. We don't really have a need for that particular circuit. We want everything to be on pretty much all the time. And so we've hooked everything up to AC1. So AC1 then has two... Uh, or I'm sorry, it has three because it has a, a, a hot, uh, a neutral, and a ground coming into this box. And so we did a video on that as well of how we wired our 120 side. So um, I'll put a link to all that stuff as well. So that's wired into our load center. And, um, and so that's how it runs when it's running off shore power. Now when we're running off battery power, um, the battery comes through and it comes through this 400 amp class T fuse, which then comes through this, um, this uh, switch, which is rated, I think, at four, 350 amps. Then we've got this guy. Um, he's the main contactor that's controlled by the BMS. Then it comes down and it's split into, this is our DC loads, which are at 100 amps, and this is our AC loads, which are at 200 amps. So then this two watt cable goes all the way back and it goes into the battery inlet of the other one. The other side of it just comes here to this negative uh, part on the shunt. And so um, all our loads are on one side of the shunt. And so our battery main then is just on the other. So that's how it's wired up. Uh, the last wire we have connected in is a little network cable uh, for the color control. And so we'll, like I said, we'll do a whole video on that. But that also just has another little network cable that plugs in. And that's how the entire inverter is wired in. So as you notice, I didn't mention that there was any kind of transfer, uh, transfer switch of any kind. Um, because there's not. Um, with this type of inverter, there's no transfer switch to switch shore power to inverter because it's a hybrid system that does its own pass through. So um, when it detects um, when it detects that there's shore power live, it will then internally do a transfer, and the same AC out that got run out of there will now be running on shore power and like I said if the loads get too high then it'll actually turn its inverter back on and start augmenting the power with it with with battery power so um, that's the reason there's no kind of transfer switch or anything like that all right so next we'll go into how we set the software up on to set the parameters up for the inverter and so we need this cable which is the uh, MK3 to USB interface cable. So this is the cable we'll be using and just a simple network patch cable to wire this thing in and then we'll set up all the parameters and most of those are gonna be charging parameters uh, and low voltage um, shut off parameters and things like that um, just to ensure that our battery is within its limits. So. The limits on these are going to be slightly inside of our BMS limits because the BMS limits are more of hard limits uh, set that will actually start to turn everything off. So what the what the inverter we want it to be able to to tell us, hey, you're running low, and hey, you know, powers you need to plug in or something before the BMS takes over and just shuts everything down. So we'll be plugging this in and hooking it up and seeing if we can get everything pushed to the inverter and maybe we'll fire it up. All right, so we've got everything plugged in. Um, we are ready to go ahead and start turning things on. So we'll turn this on, um, which will give us power to the other leg of our contactor. The contactor should actually be off because the BMS is off. We'll turn this guy on, um, which will give us power to our inverter, as we discussed earlier and um, we'll go ahead and power on the BMS. So we'll power on this BMS. Let's see it boot up. So we've got red and then we'll go to green and then we should hear the inverter kick on here in a minute. Okay so now we've had our inverter kick on. We've got power here so we should have power to our inverter. So we'll go ahead and switch that on. All right. 
Okay. All right, so our inverter is coming on there. Um, it has come on, so the little light is on. Uh, not too much drama, so that's a good thing. Um, so now we'll select the port on here and just say, hey, we're on COM4. Um, and it should, oh, okay, it says target found. And so now we've found the target, uh, meaning the inverter. And it's trying to connect and see what all the parameters are and trying to establish communications with it. So right now we should be inverting power. So we should have um, 120 volts available. We don't have anything on on our uh, sub panel, but if we did, we would have power to uh, to that stuff. Okay, here we go. We're up. So now we can see that we are inverting. Um, we can, this is our AC1, AC2 shore limits. Um, we can also tie into the grid with this one, but we are not going to do that because it doesn't make any sense for us. Um, so this tells us also our uh, DC shutdown as well as DC low restart and um, pre-alarm and all that stuff. So um, we haven't set these up yet, um, but we did set up the charge parameters, uh, the charger. So in here you can go in and select what type of battery and then the charge curve. Um, and charge curves are mostly used for lead acid batteries. Um, there's kind of a known way that they charge. Um, and so for us, the charge curve is fixed. And so we've got our absorption voltage set at 57.4, which is 4.1. Uh, volts per cell. Um, we've got our float voltage at 54, uh, mostly because we read that um, float voltage isn't really a thing for lithium batteries. It just has to be low enough just not to interfere with stuff. Um, so we've set that at 54, which is pretty close to nominal voltage. Um, and then our charge current, which it, uh, we've set at 52 amps, um, we can set that all the way up to 70 but um, we're trying to be nice to our batteries and so we've set it at 52. Um, as we can see, um, we now, with the inverter on, this used to say 0 0.05 for our current out and now it says 0.86 because it takes a little bit more power to run the inverter. So we should be inverting. Um, we're gonna go ahead and let's, uh, let's give it a try. So we'll come in here we will turn on this circuit here, which is um, all the bays are wired in through one circuit here. And so we'll go ahead and turn that one on and then we'll cross our fingers and um, this should turn on the AC in here. So if we look way in the back, there it goes. So we've got AC power here in the bay now. So if we look here, um, we can now see that we are drawing 1.93 amps, and that's at 48 volts, so that's really only like one amp at 120. So we are drawing, so if we look here, it's actually only, it's actually only half an amp. So um, we can see here that we're pulling half an amp from our 120, so that's it. It should, it should be up and running, so we, it's funny that we've waited this long and, uh, I was pretty much working and set up the whole time.